so nice to see all of your smiling and radiant faces after meditation. <laughs> so, we're into a little bit of a short series on the classic unity prayers. This week we are going to be talking about the prayer, I behold the Christ in you. As I mentioned last week, I was inspired to offer these prayers because of National Day of Prayer, which was this past Thursday, the 4th, where as a nation we are asked to turn within, to turn to God in prayer and meditation. And because turning to God in prayer and meditation is like all we do in unity, well, we do a little more, but it's the core of who we are and what we are and what we do with our prayer practice, it felt appropriate to share some of our Unity Classics with you at this time. So, show of hands. Did anyone consciously take additional time this week for prayer and meditation following last week's lesson? I see a few heads not all well done. Good. So for those of you who haven't really found a prayer practice, were you inspired to even consider thinking about it? Or maybe reread the prayer of faith that was offered to you last week in your bulletin? Anybody? Oh, good, good. Yeah, these Unity Classics have withstood the test of time, which is a beautiful thing. As most of you know, Unity is founded in the activity of prayer. And then after Myrtle's healing through prayer, the publishing part of our history kicked in so that they could share their writings. We touched a little bit on that last week as well. So Unity published not only the words and works of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, co-founders of Unity, yes, very good, but they also published other spiritual writers and metaphysicians of the time. So Charles and Myrtle were natural leaders in this birthing of a movement And they had not only courage and faith in order to create this spiritual movement, they had that courage and faith for themselves, for the unity movement as a whole, and they had it for each and every individual that crossed their paths, those who were supporting the prayer consciousness, those who were supporting the publication. And they inspired others to be courageous and hold the faith that they had. It is said that Charles Fillmore was the embodiment of prayer in action. He prayed about everything that he had to do, and then he did it. He prayed about abundance. He prayed about prosperity. He prayed about what to write about. He prayed about what to pray about. The guy prayed all the time, stories say. And in this picture here, the one where he's sitting in his favorite chair, in the silence, going to headquarters, as he called it, to speak with God to listen for inspiration. He actively sought out his guidance for everything in his life. And he always seemed to say, where he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him all the way. Now he used that he pronoun because that was the language of the day. And I know for him to be talking about God or spirit. Charles was a man of action. 
And so once he received his inspiration about a prayer request or an intention that he was holding, he was like the Energizer Bunny. And unapologetically, he moved ahead on his inspiration. It did not seem need to be logical to himself or to Myrtle, for that matter. And he encouraged people to follow their guidance, as did Myrtle. Many of the early workers in silent unity remember a similar experience when they first came to work in the prayer ministry and in the letter-writing department. A difficult letter would come into them from someone in need in the field. And they might not know how to answer or respond in an inspiring way. And so they would take that letter to Mr. Fillmore. And they ask him, how do I answer this? Will you do it for me? And he would do it maybe once or twice, three or four times maybe. And yet, we have the gurgles of our youngest congregant over here. She's liking the stories about silent unity and prayer. Could be Charles, reincarnated, we don't know. Anyway, when the letter writer came and asked Charles Fillmore for his support in answering this letter that they were having difficulty, he would help them once or twice. And then he would finally turn to them and say, The spirit that is in me is in you. Go back to your desk, pray, and you will know what to write. Sounds like a good mentor and encourager. One time, once in a while, we need some encouragement, and once in a while, we just need a push. Go do it. You have within you everything that I have within me. We need to hear that sometimes. We all have the Christ nature, the divine spark within. Also, there were many stories about individuals who became successful leaders that felt the encouragement given to them by Myrtle Fillmore, the other co-founder of Unity. Good. And so they felt that encouragement from her and said that their success was largely because of her love and support and encouragement. It earned her the nickname Mother Myrtle. And without this encouragement, some of them might not have stayed in doing the unity work had it not been for that appreciation and understanding. She helped those individuals find their right and perfect place of volunteer service in this budding movement of prayer and publication. She helped each of them identify their spiritual gifts so that they could be a greater service. Because each of us here and now, just as then, have a very unique sense, set of gifts and talents and inspirations that will fill and support the ministry like no one else can do. So it is up to each of us to find our right and perfect gift. One young man who came to work at Unity around the time of World War I was one of these individuals. He was brilliant and restless, like many of you. And it seemed as though he couldn't find his right and perfect place to be, to be a contributing service. Some place where he could use his talents and know that he was in the right and perfect place. But Myrtle Fillmore recognized him to be a gifted man and encouraged him to stay and to have faith that he would find and identify his right and perfect gifts and his right and perfect place of service. And they would come together. His name was Frank B. Whitney. He was a dentist. 
But he came to unity because he felt the call. And he later became one of the deans of the Unity Correspondence School. And it was this young man who, in 1924, had the divine idea for our daily word publication. Now, he came to Unity in 1915, so it took nine years for him to figure out what was his to do. Sure, he had other ministries and areas of service during the interim, but it wasn't until the divine idea of creating a daily inspirational guide did he really know what was his and where he should be. And so I share that with you because sometimes we rush ourselves. It doesn't take just a day or a week or a month or a year to figure it out. Sometimes it takes a whole decade because he had heard the call to come to unity prior to even going. He wrestled with whether or not he should give up his dental practice and go to Kansas City. But he did. Each of us have a call within us. And so this brilliant young man became the first editor of Daily Word. He was a poet and a writer, as well as a dentist. He had many gifts to share. And it was his poetry and his writings that in the early days of the Daily Word were shared with the people. And so, in the history of the publishing, we went from modern thought in 1889, which later became thought which merged into the monthly magazine Unity, and then they later created We Wisdom, which I also spoke about last week, a magazine for children. And then they created in 1909 a weekly unity. And then in 1924, the daily word. There was such a desire and need for this information that a monthly magazine was not enough. A weekly magazine was not enough. People wanted to be inspired and to be brought into relationship with truth every single day day, very much like us today. And so, daily word, what a gem that one is. We read daily word like many Unity churches every single week right here on the platform. Today's reading actually was from 1924. When Rob uh, reviewed the daily word I provided to him, he's like, well, this language is a little odd. I'm like, yes, 1924. Almost a hundred years ago, they too were inspiring one another to claim and live from the Christ presence within, as we are doing today. It was the original magazine of Silent Unity, our prayer ministry. So the Daily Word themes include topics such as inner peace and hope, healing, guidance, abundance, prosperity, world peace, cooperation. There are so many wonderful topics in this magazine. We reuse them again and again and again obviously, <laughs> to pull up a gem from 1924 for today. It's been published in 15 different languages, and it's shared not only in a paper booklet, but through Braille and the email and a cell phone app. It's following our modern technology so it can continue its vision of supporting individuals to maintain a spiritual practice and to know the truth of who they are, the Christ presence like this little one over here, perfect and pure. 
For just a moment, let's return to those earliest days with Frank B. Whitney as the first editor of Daily Word. He had a modest crew, so many of his own writings graced the pages. Many of his poems filled the pages of this daily magazine. One such poem that was a to become a unity favorite is the one that is in your bulletin today. It's called, I Behold the Christ in You. If you would take that out, if you have one. And let's read it together. I behold the Christ in you. Here the life of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free. I behold the Christ in you. I can see this as you walk. I can see this in all you do. I can see this as you talk. I behold God's love expressed. I can see you filled with power. I can see you ever blessed. See Christ in you, hour by hour. I behold the Christ in you. I can see the perfect one. Led by God in all you do, I can see God's work is done. It's a very powerful poem to share, not only reading it to ourself, but to surround our thoughts of another. Last week, I also shared that many of our classic unity poems are actually a list of affirmations over and over and over. The prayer of faith, a list of affirmations. The Lord's Prayer, a list of affirmations. I behold the Christ in you, a list of affirmations, affirming the truth of who we are, where we are, what we are so that we can surround ourselves with the idea of the truth, so that we can live into the idea of the truth. Unity principle number two states that we are, at the core of our being, the Christ nature. And so the real question then becomes, I won't ask for a show of hands, but I want you to take it in and ask yourself, do you see yourself as the Christ presence? Close your eyes. Take a breath. Do you see yourself as the Christ presence? Do you see the Christ potential in you? Each of us has that Christ potential. Also, as does our spouse, our children, our parents, our co-workers, our boss, our dog, the squawky bird, all of them have the essence of God, life, the Christ presence within. And so in, in order for us to see it for someone else, we need to first see it for ourselves. On Palm Sunday, I shared a couple things about how the Christ presence is actually interpreted. We teach about four levels of Jesus. The human being, Jesus is the human being, the animalistic nature. Jesus Christ is a human that recognizes that he has the spark of divinity within him. 
And Christ Jesus is someone who now has gained spiritual maturity and strives to be in that Christ-like nature more than the human element of themselves. And then there is the Christ. Pure God essence. We're all striving for that, but it probably only happens, oh, maybe this a little bit of a speck of a time. And so we strive to be our Christ potential. Each and every one of us is absolutely a human being having a spiritual experience. And when we awaken to know that we are innate divinity, and when we can express that innate divinity in our thoughts, words, and actions, we can be the Christ presence, at least most of the time, as we strive towards being that Christ presence all of the time. I tell people that if you're here on the planet, you haven't gotten to the last one. So here we all are together (laughs) doing our work. A favorite instructor at Unity Institute, Reverend Tom Thorpe, encouraged his students to memorize this prayer, I behold the Christ in you. I I was watching Rosa. I think she had Tom Thorpe as an instructor because she knew so many of the words. He told us to use this prayer as an affirmation to celebrate our Christ's presence when we know that we're being a Christ presence in the world, to celebrate it. And he also told us to use it as a reminder when we forget that we have that Christ potential within ourselves. To use it as an affirmation for those that we love, those that we care about, those that we're empowering to find their right and perfect path. And most importantly, to use it when we surround someone who we believe may have hurt us by something they said or did not say, something they did or did not do, to surround them in the idea of their Christ perfection as we move through our forgiveness process, holding that individual up in their highest so that we can hold both of us up as we move through forgiveness. It lifts each individual up through the use of this powerful prayer. And so, if it is true that the Christ is the image and likeness of God, and that it is the essence of every person, and if it is true that our path is the next step of humankind's spiritual evolution through our accepting and engaging and expressing that Christ presence, our true nature, then our practice might best include the affirming of this prayer, I behold the Christ in you on a regular basis. So I invite you to put it on your refrigerator with your favorite magnet. (laughs) It will be valuable to you, to see yourself as the Christ, to see others as the Christ, to 
hold those you love and care about as the Christ, to forgive those who may have wronged you in some real or imagined way as the Christ. Hold the truth for them. And so my prayer is that each of you have a very powerful daily prayer practice and to consider using this classic prayer in that practice. Write it out if you have to to help you as you move through a process of forgiveness and healing for yourself and others. Because these verses are so filled with truth that error thinking cannot stand in their way. And so we claim the truth of this prayer as our very own and we use it to affirm, to deny appearances and affirm the good. And you've heard this before, but if you don't have a daily prayer practice, consider the powerful opportunity it is to start. You can affirm this prayer. You can affirm the prayer of faith. There's extras on the literature table in the foyer if you weren't here last week. You could affirm the prayer for protection. It's in your bulletin. There are countless tools available to us to affirm the truth of who we are. How I see each of you as the Christ presence. And so I leave you with our traditional unity blessing. I love you. I bless you. I truly appreciate you. And I behold the Christ as you. Namaste.